Hello, welcome to another tutorial in Generative AI using uh, Forge. So in this tutorial, we are going to work a little bit in upscaling. I would talk a little bit of models, but basically what I want to show you how to do something like this. So this is our starting image. And as you recall, we did this image in previous videos and are using Comfy UI. Okay, so the image was done in this resolution, 768. <clears throat> and I don't recall the other uh, details. But in any case, what we want to do is scale. And scaling, there are different of things. So we have what is called AI scaling. So look at here, what basically I am applying that model or AI scaler to this image and increasing the re resolution. So there are different of them here and showing you just two. So let me go to the ultra chart. So as you see, there is some difference how things are results. But the idea of this AI scaling that it doesn't change your image. It will increase the resolution. And this is what I would like to do. So just to demonstrate you that original image, new one. Okay, so it's basically adding more sharpness, resolving better the edges without adding details. Okay, so that the, that is the only the the other okay there. Now that you add details, okay, that basically it is image to image. So here I have just to show you that a cold creative scaling. So you do pretty much the same, but now you go into latent space and you do add details clearly. It's much better image than, than the previous video, but the uh, image uh, or, or a scaler, but you add new details. So this will be up to you if you want to use it. So look at here that the earring is different. Details here in the necklace also is different and you can add different noise levels. So here we're <clears throat> playing around with the noise in. So this is the noise, the prompt. We're going to say a little bit about that. So here I go to high noise. And look at that, it's completely different. So it's a much, much nicer image. Resolution 1024, okay? But completely different composition. So this is creative. So we're upscaling and adding new details. You can also remain the same resolution. There is no problem. It works the same. Instead, in this case, we're multiplying. We're starting from the small image. And then we're multiplying four times to arrive to a 1024. So you keep the same image, but maybe it would be better to work a little bit in the lines you now to diffuse better the information to get better so you can imagine that you can mix both of them so we're going to talk about that but before that let's address another benchmarking okay so let's address another benchmark and so we have done a few of them i'm basically about to address uh Forge user interface that is much faster than the others. And so far, I'm super happy. It's a little bit ruffled around the corner, Forge, but it, it, developers are working. So some things don't, don't work. So I switch back to automatic 11.11 and so on. And sometimes I go to Comfy UI for very com complex things that later I want to show you something. But this bit benchmarking is built around this prompt, it's a classic prompt, no, it's done for, yeah, as you go to Hugging Face, you will see that they have it there. So no negative prone, uh, checkpoints, I'm going to use many checkpoints, SDXL and SD 1.5, and I want to talk about that this is still not dead, I use, I was sort of quite surprised because I started to do everything, all, all this generative AI images and so on using XL and then I was exposed to this one for some reasons and yeah it's it works very well. So and some other values here you now for <clears throat> generating the images. So all these otherwise the specified these are the values so if I change something I will mention. And well classical details. So something like that we're going to get. So this here I'm not using these values and actually I'm using some other libraries and loaders and so on to get something like this, very cool, very realistic. In any case, let's talk about here that this is about checkpoints. Now there is a lot to say about that. And here I'm using SD 1.5 and we have many resolutions so i always stress and say you need to know your library okay your model that you're using your checkpoint or your inference model because can be many things can be checkpoints, loaders, embeddings, and so on 
So you need to know that. So these models usually, I'm quite surprised that there are newer versions that they can go up to 1024, the same resolutions as XL, but usually they perform very well at these resolutions. But here I'm showing down some timings and here we have different libraries now that different checkpoints that are used to, to generate the images. Later we're going to see you now probably one of these ones. And now we move to XL, the same idea, XL, different resolutions. And this, the XL can, can I have been able to go to uh, 1500, okay, but not every checkpoint does that. Usually most of the checkpoints can go to this one, but let's say the common agreement is that they have been trained to 1024 instead this is the 1.5 muscles then have been training within you now these resolutions uh, but now but muscles then i say will go to this one rare models will go up to this one and then you have aspect ratios by the way so same idea applies so when we look at here we are also in comparing time and just to show that sd 1.5 tends to be fast uh, fastest now so almost half here then here the values and then when you go 1024 pretty much you, you don't gain much and here well i don't have any data because they all fail now you get you get pretty much garbage or repeated images you know two torsos two heads and so on so these two models can be compared as at this level no X, sdxl and sd 1.5 and you can see that xd 1.5 is still is a little bit fast it's not that much okay but you get again something and i have to say when you are doing cartoonish image anime illustration digital illustration i think sd 1.5 it, it, it is unbeatable photo realism realism oh sdxl is quite good but you can get similar results with with 1.5 and then the other thing for ox scaling personally speaking and hopefully i'm going to show you that it's much easier to control control net use in 1.5 so later and also another business we're going to, to address that but probably you have experienced that if you are doing ox scaling so here we have now this comparison so it's still there pretty much it is alive 1.5 then just a comparison because there are many models okay so <clears throat> We have the normal XL, then we have some variation of the XL, the lighting, then you have LCN to accelerate, and then you have the turbo models. So these three options here, they're going to give you way much faster output. But something important I would like to stress that yes, it's very, very fast the output, okay, but you are losing uh, quality. So it's up to you. If you want good quality, you want details. When I talk about details, I uh, give you more details. The this one give you more details, or if you want fast outcomes, you're sort of interested in this. So I go for this model. But here you have a comparison. You have the timing. So this image takes about no. These are average values. You know, several generations and about 18 seconds. And look at that. You are halving the time with the lighting, which is the newest one. And I think it's, you you need to choose one of the this tree to accelerate go for the lighting is the best one then you have the lcn and you can see that lcn and turbo kind of details not the same these two remains very close so i recommend you for this but it is up to play uh, up to you to play with these different variations and same stuff you have it with this sd 1.5 which is already fast but uh, you can get something similar actually it's the 1.5 so you only have the lcn you don't have turbo lighting there and uh, to my knowledge so yeah here you have the comparison and you have to be very careful the auction so so you look at here now you need to use for instance the tool where there are specific samplers so now in forge you have those samplers built in the same for the lcn you have a very specific sampler for that the um, lighting doesn't require that but you should there are some samplers that works better than the others so also I, I can talk a lot about that samplers and so on so look at that this works with six steps six steps and six steps all of them but they have different uh configuration but you need to read the model what you're doing because you said developers recommend something and just to show you that you can go for the normal sdxl same values as the lighting and look at that you get pretty much garbage you get the same time okay as this one but pretty much it's not like 
the image is not complete, so you need to do more steps. So usually, already at 12 steps, you see something okay, and 12 steps will be something about 12, 14 seconds uh, to get something like that. So this is it, you feel, feel, feel free to play. Uh, I usually use these models when I want to play with prompts, or I need to generate many images that I'm doing experiments, you no know, stuff like this. I do it. With, I, I did it with the lighting, generating many lighting and LCN generating many images. Okay, so the other thing that I want to talk about is aspect ratios. Already previous video mentioned and talk about that a little bit, but they are very important also. And same stuff, same stuff apply with SD 1.5 and. XL, so same with the timing, 1.5 tend to, to be faster. You need to find the sweet spot, but usually the sweet spot between the two models is this resolution. Okay, here you have it for portray. And as you can see here, that SD 1.5 is very good result, I have to say. It's very realistic, very nice. Besides the tail here that you have it there, but that's not a problem. Remember, you have the seat number, you can change it and eventually you will fix that or you can do in painting, but this is not a big of a deal. Here, it's quite nice, okay? But I can show you that many other models would give you problems for you have weird legs and so on. So it's not perfect Excel as well. And then also we go from portrait to widescreen, okay? And this format is very good and common between buzzers then. And as you can see, it's very nice result, okay? Here you have some watermark, so that can be erased. So I, I didn't use negative, but you put the negative or again in painting and it goes. Also comes to my memory right now regarding models that also you have a stable cascade models and stable cascade models, something new. So it's up to you to, to choose, but uh, I, I tested that one at uh, those model uh, that that checkpoint, and you can go up to 2048 in resolution. It's super slow, by the way. So still, these are alive if you want to compare with a stable cascade. But I have no doubt that this year this resolution will increase. Will be something new because this stuff is, is change uh, very fast. And now to end. Okay, let's also talk about prawns because they are very, very important. So let me see what is happening here. That is a little bit slow. Okay, so basically the same case, I have the prompt that is increasing now, the prawn increasing. And just to mention, it's very important. Be careful with your prawn. You need to play around with that. Uh, adding stars, right keyword. So we start with this one, then we add the next keyword and see the evolution. Talking about the legs, look at that. This is the SDXL at the right resolution that it was trained. And look at that, it have weird legs. Okay, here, here, here. So they are not perfect. But as you keep refining your prom, things get better. I go to the next one. It's still here, weird the legs, but it's still getting better. Better, well, five legs, well, many legs here, here. And here already gets really good, but you keep adding all those keywords. Uh, to stress that this was done using this model, the lighting library, six step to CFE. So this is particular to this model. Again, just read recommendation by the developer. And the final one, final image, quite cool, very nice image. So bringing back prompts, and now let's move to workflow for ox scaling that this video is about this just to bring this workflow so there are these are the main workflows so you can start from, from an image your prompt your checkpoint and then you do the ai ox scaling the model ox scaling okay that one i call it fidelity because it stays it it, it, it stay close to that image okay and then you get your final image then you have the Creative Fox scaling, which is just a very image to image. That's all like text to image. This is image to image. Your prompt is an image. Plus also you can control with a prompt. So we're working in latent space. So it can be classified also as a ox scaling. And then you play with the noise and more noise, more creat creativity, less noise, less creativity. And you can stay close to the, to your starting image and increase your resolution. And then as you can guess, 
you can mix these two so you go like this so do first this one then move to this one you can do it also in the opposite way but usually the best results are first fidelity then creative but you can go also creative then fidelity there is nothing stopping you from doing that and this is what it, this work is what is called the high res fix okay so you start with an image then fidelity scale and then move to this one so things can get very complex just to show you know this is will be the very complex workflow and stuff like this is something that you can this is the spaghettification that you can implement easily in comfy ui many links instead in force automatic 11 11 you are you are just restricted now to what you have there but you can iterate manually there is no problem and honestly you know you need to go crazy stuff or at least for what I'm doing. So basically you have this thing here. Okay, here you can choose. Okay, I don't want to do the upscaling move here, go just to the create creative and so on. Uh, very important, already talking another video about tiling because you have this image and remember that these models, they are bound by the same limits that you have in those checkpoints. So if the checkpoint is trained as a 1024, you, you cannot go larger than that. Okay, because you can have problems, your image will be run or you will run out of memory. So there is something called tiling now that you will split the, the image in different suit images and then each image you put in, in, in memory or whatever in your GPU and then that will stay within the limits of that model. Okay, so you have tiling, also you have your inference model that each of these steps you can add new prompts, new checkpoints, lowers, embeddings, guidings images control net and so on very important in each of these ones you can do that and control everything and then when you get something here you can keep looping and refining your images so this is what you're going to see in those tools that you see cloud based like crea or magnify they have something like this and to stress what is very important here it is the models models is extremely important so you need to find your good model and then just to bring back but it's tied in now, this is it. So you have an image, so it's that image, it's too large. You cannot put it in memory your, or your model is not trained for that. So you split it like this and then you're going to have different suit images that they will stay in that. So this is what you are doing entirely. So this was this the benchmarking and small introduction to <clears throat> scaling. And now let's move to, to the tutorial. Okay, so before moving to the tutorial, just to show you a little bit some of the results that I have, these grids generated. And well, just to mention that here I love, in this case, using uh, Forge because this, when you do many images, there is a script in Forge, you, you know, probably can pinpoint that that you can do this automatically and in Forge comparing with Automatic 11.11 or Comfy UI, it is much, much faster. You know, in comparison with Automatic 11.11, it, it was way much faster. Comfy UI, about 30% much faster, but this was super fast with. So basically this is what, what I have comparing now different images. So you need to find your, your model. You need to know your model. So here I put many models. Okay, so one of the reasons that I have many models, I, I'm playing with them, I'm looking what I want to do, and then also I want to merge models for this upscaling and stuff, but also I, I will train in some models, it's not easy task by the way. So by no means I will train a complete model, but merging, yeah, I'm doing something. But see about all these models, and let's say that what I want to do is do a creative upscaling of an image and I want to have something realistic. So pretty much from this, I, I can see that probably the Colossus is a very good model, but for this prone that I have, exactly one in the, in the previous slide, I see that it's giving me a very realistic image, okay? In the sense of texture, okay? What is happening there is not very realistic, but in texture, yes. But it's up to you to pick up one. Then the same here with is the 1.5 you can look for what is your right model and probably this one is well it's a really good one realism from Hades and very realistic you no know, textures and so on and this one actually the original model for the guy from stability diffusion they are, they are not very good now for this one so see that it's giving me kind of garbage in this case in this case so look for your models pick up a model 
and then use it for whatever you want to do. And to show you something else here, I have a more complex grid here. So this is a stable diffusion 1.5. And again, I put here many models with different denoise values, okay? Remember, this is the creativity. And let's say that my goal, and this is the image that we're going to do the tutorial. As I mentioned, we already did it in a previous video. So I want to go from that image that is a painting, very synthetic image, or is a rendering to something realistic like this. So this is what you need to identify. Not every model will do that, so this is your goal. So here we're driving uh, the, 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 the rendering, the new image using a starting image, but also your prompt plus some other options. But from here you start to see that. Uh, by the way, look at that, it's very realistic. I also added some freckles and so on. So there are LoRa for that. So those are LoRa's embeddings and so on. So this actual reality, reality is really good to stress. This is SD 1.5 and look at that. You get very realistic results and at the resolution of uh, 1024, by the way, all this stuff. And well, there are many, many models. Okay. All of these nice results. Then all this stuff is cartoonish and anime. And this is where I say that Basically, it is unbeatable when it comes to stuff like anime, cartoons, and so on. Okay, here we have photorealism, so on, more photorealism. So pretty much very good results. Okay, I'm missing a lot of the other cartoonish images, but very nice. Well, actually here I put all the best models. So look at that. I already have a selection of models. In this case, this is the original one for stability diffusion. As you can see, it doesn't work very well. Instead, all the others, they give good results. Okay. So it's up to you to pick up one. And let me move uh, something that here, that talking about here, and now the same stuff with SDXL now. So a little bit more complex with SDXL. So I put here many models, but also function of the noise and number of steps, okay? So the idea here is to see now the models, how they behave now, different models, the noise, and to see how many steps you, you, you need. So important here is that it is just the input image. I'm not driving this uh, with a prompt. So this is another way to see if that model is a good one. If you put the image with no prompt, let's see what will give you with a high denoise label. So if you get something that is realistic, you know, or photorealistic, you know that model will perform very well. As you get a rendering, you know that it will be more for a rendering. And this is important because there are many models. There are models that are <coughs> dead on, on realism. There are some models that are general that they can do a little bit of everything. There are some other models that are specific for anime. So look for the models, but this is how I test the models. So these specific models, I know they perform very well for real, uh, realistic will give you realistic results and here we go and now I'm driving image plus the prompt okay so the results and here you can see that they all perform very well okay so you can see also with a few steps high the noise they give that result so you can get an idea so this is another tip that you can get here usually low the noise you need to do many steps you can see here so kind of a rule for me, they know it's less than 0.4. If I do 10 steps, more than that, I tend to do 20, sometimes 30, if I'm doing very large ox scale, you know, talking about scale. And let me see, what do I have here? Okay, and here, comparison with different uh, samplers, okay? There are many samplers, and the samplers that you see here are, are in my opinion, the best one, but also you look in models, you go to CV AI and so on, you will see that most of them, they recommend that. So probably this is a very good one. It converts, it converts in the sense that if you look at the number of steps, you see that probably when you arrive to 20, you have pretty much the same image. So kind of conversion in that sense, but also you can measure the convergence, you know, going to the noble Google Collapse or running Python. So I'm doing that, doing that. So it's not like, I'm, throwing no rocks in the dark. So I know what I'm doing you know, and testing that in Python, but yeah, I have a lot of information, but pretty much 
okay these are the best one then you have the sde so one peculiarity about this sde that this one is not a fully converged in the sense that it adds a little bit noise so if you look at the images and some of these ones you will see there are different so this is different from this one and so on because they keep adding some noise so it adds noise but not much but if you look at the Euler and when you see this a is Euler ancestral these are they add noise back so as you <clears throat> you look at your results you will see there are different okay there are different so in that sense they are not converging but there are good models in the sense that, that they add that noise so you can have different results so be careful all the time when you see that a means ancestral add noise is the add some noise but much much less and caras no noise they converge and they tend to converge very well in 20, 20 iterations. Let's see what do I have here. So in this one is a long grid. And okay, so here I have all, these are all SD 1.5. No, these are all uh, XL and I put many models here. I'm talking about now this style. So all this stuff here, okay. These are into anime, digital illustration and so on. I really like this model. <laughs> I don't know why, but seems very realistic. So strength resolve I really like so here you have more models how they perform then you go into all these anime cartoon stall stuff so these models are very heavy into this style so you cannot go from some, something to you cannot do any something realistic with those models you, you need to stay into that model then you have crystal clear which is a do it all model okay you can do realism photos anime so on but you can see from this that this model is heavily biased the weights are heavily biased towards this kind of illustration same from this one but then you go to juggernaut which one of the my favorites and see that it is biased a lot of weight towards towards releasing sanus but this one is a mixture not so much night vision is another good one okay this one also illustration well playground then more <clears throat> more cartoonish stuff releasing and so on Okay, you go, I really like this one, pixelation and so on. I test that the, how creative can be the model, so. And then you have uh, these particular models. This is for set nine people. So these are models that, they're much faster than any of the other models, but they don't perform very well. I mean, they perform very well, but the quality is not so good. So six set nine models are very good. The, 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 image generation time is like probably 40 50 percent faster you need to do the same 20 steps whatever but you lose something in the quality you know so stuff with the yoga now with the uh, other models lighting lcn and so on and here we go the same and we have here many okay here we have many of the or all of the uh, samplers okay comparing all the samplers and there is an influence some samplers are slow some are fast i don't want i don't want to go into detail about that but pretty much the ones that i showed so this one that you have here these two are the best one then i recommend the euler ancestra and the other one that i didn't put in the previous uh grid is this d d d in the Dean, this one is also a very good one. They are very fast, very convergent. So, but then you can play with many of them. So this one is also it's the one that I like, but I'm experimenting and measuring some stuff there. So pretty much this is about the models. As you see, there is a lot there. Pick a model according to your goals and to remind you that you have here the marketplace for, for all those models. So just to show you, go here in Juggernaut and you will see that you have the lighting version four steps then you have the turbo version somewhere i think i know like uh, juggernaut doesn't have turbo standard version as you go right here they're going to give you some guidelines what is the best resolution look at that recommend the sampler and so on so another one this one the dream shaper also like this one so you have your turbo version lighting version and somewhere you will have the LCM version as well. And you have also stable diffusion one version. So pick out your model. Remember you have here in the bottom your instructions. And look at that, this model is a little bit of everything. Okay, so this one tends to, to have uh, a bias toward this one. If you want to do realistic, you need to guide it heavily with your prompt instead. 
I found that yogurt now at least nine it's more biased to uh, realistic cinematic stuff okay and as well be careful about this one it's important you know, sometimes some models can give you some surprises so yeah many times I found surprises so that's all about models how you choose and now let's go to the actual tutorial okay so we're here we want to take this image and pretty much do this upscaling now that we saw here so the first one <coughs> Recall the first one is the AI scaling model scaling. That that one. Let me go here. You have text to image T to I. Okay, so here you have the high res high res fix. Okay, this high res fix is the two steps of scaling. That first you do uh, the AI scaling, and then you are going to do here. You select the model, and then you do the latent space with these steps. I don't recommend you to do this in e text to image. It's better to generate your image and then move that image to image to image because here you have better control, but it's up to you. So I don't do it here, but it works in the same way. Then you can take that image and here you can do whatever you want. And we're going to see that. But to do the upscaling, the model upscaling, you do it here in this tab, extra. And let's, let's do it. So let me go, I have here. So you have the starting image, it was done in 76a and then and down scale that image to 256 so see that is a lot of pixelation now so let's upscale this one remember this is fidel fidelity of scale ai of scale model of scale i'm not changing the image i just increasing the resolution this is what i like to do i'm happy with this most of the time so you need to pick up a model there are many of them probably you don't have all these models you need to download all the models and the best marketplace for models you have it here this is the link probably in the video description you're going to have it and yeah here just come here and freak out because there are many of them according to your style what you want to do final resolution and so on so yeah they can give you better different results sometimes if you want to do something very specific so for instance look at this one and yeah they claim you get that but <laughs> most of the time yeah you get something like that but yeah it's up to you to play with those models so i already download many of them okay as you see i put it there and playing around by the way you put those models and let me go in here in automatic 11 11 as you, you say into models and you're going to have this folder okay this this oh bum, bada, what else you enter here you put it here so i recommend you to put everything in this folder put all your models here but then you can classify you know they have their classification like this and when you run it will give you a step it's going it's going to give you a, a warning you know this is here you can put models you have dat i didn't put it there and so on this is another model so if you don't know where to put it, put it, put everything here. It will give you just a warning. So that's all. So let's do here the upscaling. So remember the image is 256. I will upscale four times. So 2024. And I will scale four times because the model that I'm going to use, that is the maximum resolution. You have it there. But if you put eight here, it will do two steps. So four times scaling and then two times that image okay but again i don't recommend that one it's up to you so let's put four scaling so this is super fast okay look at that there and you have your image and this is it you put it there and in case you don't know that those images you have here output extra images and you have it there so this is your new image and look at that there's different all the edges and so on but it is upscaling the image is keeping all the details of the original image and just to show you properties here you have your image your new resolution so pretty much this is what we did here so we start with this image and we did this and this is it okay so you can zoom in and look at that, it's recovering very well, the starting image. So you're starting from that and you get everything. And to be sure here, look at that, this is what we have. I downscale, so pretty much a pixelation, and I managed to recover details. So pretty much what you get from this is what, the, what you have in your starting image, as you can guess. So you have 
ultra char then you have this one that kind of in the contrast okay there is a problem there but, but you can get a revision of this one i just play it with many of them so it's up to you okay there are many i just put two of them here and then let me show you the next step will be you have your image you are happy with this one most of the time i'm happy with this but <clears throat> probably you can move this image to latent space image to image and add some details at same resolution higher resolution lower resolution is up to you so that is the high res fix to a step of scaling or you can do also pure ox scaling so starting from so in this case starting from this image 76a what i did is just a low noise noise okay so this is pure latent space of scaling 1024 okay I, I went from this resolution 1024 so look at that you get this then high noise you get this more noise you get more details and look at that is getting more towards the side of photo realism okay instead here it's more towards the painting style so driven by the model but also driven by the keyboard and look at the different also so here this means that my keyboard i have the keyboard painting if i put now the keyboard photo it's pretty much different images same seat number and so on but look at what you have so this is more into the photo realistic style this is still a little bit paintish if i may say that so look at that yeah for me it's a little bit more paintish so i still have those details of the model that it goes into more art and detail illustration and so on okay so this is the latent space the creative ox scaling and then you can mix that so let's do that so coming back here nothing else to say you can play with all the, those models so for me this is a good one and most of the time let me put it there i stay with this so pretty much this is my result as you see it's quite nice result very fast and the other one this one it gives this strange result okay with the contrast no change the colors but it's not a problem but it's up to you then this is stuff here it is to my understanding this is not a second pass this is a blending so here you can put a second ox scaler you give a value there okay the visibility look at that this is not a scaling so you put one and it is a strong let's say a strong visibility and then we'll mix this with this and we'll do a linear blending of those two ox, ox scaler but all the ox scaling is done here here you just do a blending you no know, add some noise so serious like nothing one put it all okay so it's a blending i never do that when i honestly i don't see the point of doing that then more stuff that i don't want to talk feel free to play with that but this is like reconstructing faces stuff like that and more okay so this is your <clears throat> creative of scaling and then here you have these tabs and if you want you can get this image and then you can move it to image to image i click there and then i have it image to image and you get the resolution here and see that it's a thousand twenty four right now so i'm doing these steps manually okay the now i'm doing the high res but i will do it manually so move the image here and now let's add some noise so the noise you add it here so no 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 noise so basically same image a lot of noise very different composition i will stay at the, at the same resolution okay i just want to add more details and let me go to one i have my prom it's very important you need to drive by a, by a prom I already saw sh show you know the previous images the grips so you don't put anything it will do some fantasy but it's better to to add something if you don't know what is happening here okay you can put whatever you know what is the main since you can click here and this one will interrogate the image and it's very very accurate i have to say then probably you can add, add the interrogator here you can download this is an extension that it used very library so yeah, not right now you see this one from the guys from open ai so it's up to you okay so i would use this one high noise level uh half year 20 steps but by default it's not going to do that it's going to do this value 
times this plus one. But actually, let me put here 0 0.5 to show you better. So this value times this plus one. So it will do 11 steps. Okay, so as you go here, let's see what we have here. Okay, so this, you see here, 11 steps. So the idea of doing that, as I mentioned, that as you are doing image to image and your images, they are going to be similar, it makes no sense if you are adding not so much noise, it makes no sense to do many steps. Okay, so that is the idea, what, what you have, that's why you have that. However, <clears throat> I have to say that for me, if the, the noise is less than 0.4, I do 10 steps, I like to fix that in 10 steps, and more than that, I do 20, very large, like 0, 9, 1, I do 30, and when when I do an upscaling and then I increasing these to large values, I do more, okay? So, you will have that problem that that value will change as you change this scale, but there is a way to fix that. So, as you go here into extensions, oh, sorry, settings, and you look into image to image here, already was there, you go here, image to image, you have this box here. So see that you select and now you're going to do exactly the values, okay, that you have in your slider. Okay, it's up to you, okay, in this case, let me fix it. So you, whatever you put here, you're going to do it. So let's fix it to 20, in, independently of what you have here. So let me put a denoise of one very large and just to show you that now it's fixed to 20. okay okay there you go 24 seconds in this case and um, fantastic very photorealistic okay maybe it is changing a little bit position of the <clears throat> of the person but that can be controlled that is something else for another video like using control net or so on but pretty much now you are doing your creative scanning. So what you see in those wet sites now in the cloud, basically they're doing something like this. However, there are many options and I have to, to say that this creative scaling, it is a gain of numbers. There are many numbers, many options to, to, to change. And as I mentioned, it tends to be much, much easier using SD 1.5. So this tutorial, I'm going, to do it, I'm going to do it with Excel, another one where I show, introduce more advanced options, 1.5. But let me go now here, 0 0.7. Okay, so we put 0 0.7 and also to remind you that the images, in case you don't recall, you will have here wet UI output and all the images are, are, are safe here. So this is image to image. So you do it te text to image, put it there. If you are doing grids, you put it in the other. So there you go. This is 0 0.9. Now we have this one and there you go. So see that now this one reduce the noise and see that it start to get closer to your image. So this is the idea. Okay, then I go 0 0.5. And it will more it will be more closer. It will keep the style of this model. It will still be realistic or photorealistic. Okay, but now it will start to probably get much closer to what you have here that is a painting. So see that you have there. Probably you can argue that is uh, it's a painting. It's a rendering. So remember, you have the prompt. And look at my prompt here. This is the original prompt, how this image was generated using Confi UI, by the way. So my problem here is this keyword there, painting. So let me put photo of a woman and let's see what happens now. So I should get, not necessarily I will get a photorealistic, but there will be a big difference between the images. Okay, now we're reading the prompt, but also you get the prompt of the image. Both of them are prompts that have a weight into whatever you are doing that is controlled by this denoise. And actually, look at that, it's more photorealistic. And let me go here and put but both images side to side. Uh, so it was this one, no, that was the slide there. Okay, this one. Okay, so this is more into the painting style, the art style, and this is the photorealistic, which I can improve a lot, by the way. So 
and I can make it more realistic. And that is the inference, as I mentioned. So I can get to this stuff. You now, inference is all the models that I put checkpoints, LoRa's, embeddings, and so on. So this gets very, very photorealistic. And this is interesting here that I have this image starting from this resolution, different combinations. I went in latent space, 1024, okay? I didn't use the high res fix, so nice result, but then I used the high res fix. First step was the AI ox scaling and then the latent space, and there you have the results. So it's up to you to judge which one is better, okay? But what is interesting that from this, now I go higher. 2048. Okay, there is some difference, and just to zoom and look at that better resolution. But look at that, the expression lines. Actually, in my prom, I added no expression lines, and you can make this person older and so on. But see that things are disappearing comparing with my starting image. So I'm using this image to drive this one, but something actually not, I'm not using this one. But if I go to this one, look at that now those details disappear and this is very important well, actually i started from this one that when you do this <coughs> of scaling as you want to go very large here i went from this to this in one single step you you and you have noise but that noise is not going to be inject okay continuously or too much in this image so what you need to do is get to this one where you have all the details and then double so basically now i'm here and let me double here so basically here i'm saying this one is starting from this one so look at that now i double i keep my details i have low no low noise because i don't want any artifact but you see one you can keep your high noise and then i went to this one and there you go and to show you details there that you have 2048, 6 I have to say that I have been able to, to go to very large resolution, but it's super time consuming. So this is a, a gain of number, but also hardware. So you have good hardware, you can do crazy stuff. And the eyes, look at the eye, how cool the resolution in the eyes here. So basically now you can control everything. So there are many techniques, you have to be careful, the order and so on. Okay, so we have here, okay, and then you can reduce your this one to 0 0.3, and now would we'll be very, very close to this one. So usually, if you want to keep the same details, I like to, to use 0 0.3. You can go even lower. Do not put 0 because it will crash. Put 0 0.01. So, so somewhere is divided by 0, so that's why it's crashing. So see that you have there, saying the stuff that now here is not going to help you much the keyword, sorry, this one, because now what you're telling, be closer to, to this image. So you can put this keyword there, probably you can add a lot of weight there. Let's see what happens is I add 1.5. So this means I add a lot of weight to this specific word. So I don't know, actually I haven't touched this one. So see that what I'm doing is XL and I'm super happy, 12 seconds. So I don't need to to use lighting models to reboot that you can use with this stuff. So it didn't have much influence, so. Let me put paint in there. And to show you something about the model, there is another model, this one, I really like this model. And let me go to 0 0.7 with this model, okay? So in 0 0.7 with this model, and leaving that resolution, let's see what we get. Okay, so this one is also do it all. So let me go here, I'll bedel. So it's a fantastic model. Be careful with that because also this one is, can generate some of those not safe for work results, but it's a very good model, but see that is do it all. Okay, but it's very, it's very heavy towards animate, 3D, okay, 2D, gain, Okay, ultimate, this is tough, less heavy, towards realistic, stuff, cinematic. Okay, so it's a little bit slow. Remember, I switch model, and this is a stuff when I do the timing. Each time you, 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 you switch model, 
that first generation is a little bit slow, then the next one will be faster. So look at what we have, and you can see that clearly this is towards that illustration or painting style. But now, and this one is quite cool, that now I put photo, and clearly you will see the influence that this specific prong keyword will drive your image. So remember, image and text both of them count for your final image. And as you see, I, I, I'm not using negative prone. Okay, I don't like to use them, but from time to time I put those prongs. But if you can get a good image with positive prong, which is super, super heavy in your generation, that's more than enough. And look at that now, very photo realistic. Okay, so from this point, well, you can do a lot of stuff. So look at that, we did this using this model. So hopefully you're getting an idea. And this is the two step, the high res, okay? Where I did it manually. <clears throat> Or if you want, okay, you can, uh, by the way, before doing that, let, let me increase the resolution. So remember, if you put here this, likely it's not going to work because now you are outside the box of this model that it was training with a given resolution. So what you can do is tiling that, that's what we're going to see later, but be careful about that. But this model probably can go Let's see. So personally speaking, I think I can still go a little bit higher and <clears throat> it's not going to, to, to give problems. So see that the second generation was 20, 20, 20 seconds. I'm talking about that some models tends to be faster and slower. So this one is one of those that tends to be slower than comparing with Jogger now or probably with the whole average of all my models. Tends to be a little bit slower, but four seconds. So. For me, that's not much. I'm more interested in quality than velocity and memory consumption as well. So look at that now. I increase the resolution and well, pretty much. It worked, no strength results. Let's see the images here. Uh, again, I put it there. So they are different also because because I think I didn't fix, so there are two reasons. I didn't fix the seat number, or remember that when you increase your latent space, also the, the composition will, will change. Now it's fixed. So this is, you change when you increase latent space, like in this case, composition tends to, to, to change, and now you resolving better details. So look at that. I can zoom in, and we have that resolution. So this is quite funny also when you start to do this like this uh, manually and you have you no know, character there, the tendency will be that it will keep opening the mouth. So you can control that simply and let me show you now that you can guess that you can go here, close mouth. Sometimes it's not enough so you go open mouth here. So one of the situations that I can put it, but this is now I have found it that when you have it and you increase now, you do your scaling one at a time, the new images always have the tendency to, to open the mouth. It's quite strange. It doesn't happen to the eyes that it will close eyes or it's just the mouth it tends to, to open it. So let's see what, what, what happens. And clearly now that this one had an influence in, in your image but clearly i can see this already it is closed the mouth there so ba -ba 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 -ba. let me go here and there you go this one close this one didn't put it it is open there so there is a lot of stuff that you you, you have to be careful and then probably and to show you now i have this one and probably I'm losing some realism here. And remember, this is a, a gain of numbers. You have many stuff, many models. So let me go to Lora, which are small models that you can add to improve sense. So for instance, let me add a model, a specific model for eye, for skin. So I have this one. So I have many of them. I already know this one. So this one is adding already freckles and natural skin and so on. So, let me sh go here and you sort of already arrange everything. So again, this is the stuff that you need to hunt for the best load at your best embedding and so on. So basically this is what it's doing this model. So 
strain in a small set of images and it's going to give you that and it's the same with textual inversion or embeddings and also these are small success <laughs> success to 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 improve cnc per network all this stuff is the same stuff <clears throat> let me do this with okay with this image increasing the resolution and at this point this is creative of scaling this is what you will see in many websites where i'm doing but it's super tricky to control as you might as you have seen so basically this we got to this okay our creative of scaling and if you put very low noise okay you can get the same image but these are already modified so stuff like this this is the two steps so starting this one you get to this one low low noise 2x of scaling so now we go to 15 something so it's doing tiling by the way so also ai models they do tiling then i increase to i oh know stay, i stay in 2x but now it make noise so start to be different and this one is very different but still following very very well aligned with that but look at the details there okay so this is the two steps that you can do and then well you it's not very realistic but then you can control that to make it a very realistic and this is it we have the image and there you go so maybe the lighting is not helping then you have many keywords and styles then I talk about styles, so you can add your style, natural lighting, whatever, to control that. But now this is, well, this is very cool, very nice. So yeah, different from the starting image, but it's up to you. If you want to keep the same style, then you have control net that this is something that another video we talk about that because it's very tricky to control with XL, it's easier to control with 1.5. So now how do we do all this stuff? in this image to image because previously we moved from here to here the image and then we did this step here which is the latent space of scaling so remember this this creative scaling is image to image that's all so now let me go back to the starting image okay so we can end here so this is my starting image i get the dimensions here so to do all this stuff in one single step here in image to image you go here to scripts so by the way, if you are curious about how to generate those grids, you go here and then just put whatever you want to control, put it here and that's all. So separate it by comma. Now you can put one, two, three, whatever, or you can select from a list there. So this is that, that is how I did all those scripts. And in Forge is super fast compared to automatic 11.11 and even with Comfy UI. So I love that. Okay, so go for the, you have to upscale SD upscale and ultimate X SD upscale. This one you need to install. Okay, this one comes already with with the user interface. Interior is the same, but this one works better. You have more control, so I recommend you to use this one. But in any case, you go to this one also. It's going to give you instruction how it's controlled, how the tiling is done. So look at that. It's telling you that the the the, the width and height of the tiles is set by this value independent of your image dimension so basically this multiply the image dimension and then the tiling it is controlled by this so let's do it to show you so let's say that i want to have a tiling 512 512 the larger the better but remember it is bound by the dimension not by how the model was trained so let me put it larger larger so let me put it a95 a95 multiply by two so it would be 15 something and this one is just how they do overlap so this effect is not very strong here it is very strong in the ultimate and then you choose your model here so let's go for this one okay it's up to you to play you click here and as you go here you're going to see that it's going to do the tile ox scale. So this is the first AI ox scaling and it's being tile. And then here you have SD ox scale will do four tiles, two by two. It's computed automatically now using this dimension and then you, you can know a priori what is happening. And then each tile will be 
uh, render or you will do the image. Remember, will, I fix the number of stacks. So each style is 20 steps. If you leave the default option, it will be, you know, this value times this one and so on. Okay. So here, what is interesting, I will show you something that where things get tricky. Okay. And to mention the tiling of the AI aux scaler, those options, I think somewhere, somewhere here, I don't recall. You should will, you should have that. Let's see. Image to image, stable diffusion, samplers, optimization. So somewhere here, there is those options, the aux scaling, and there you're going to find also on the sliders that you can adjust that. Okay, I don't recall, but just look here. So look at what, what happens here, is that clearly you see the tiling. Boom, boom, boom. But this is what happens. You have four tiles, and then uh, the model no, will, will generate the, the, the image, but in each tile will put a different image. So this is where it is difficult to control. Okay, this is strongly, it is strongly driven by the denoise. So large denoise, more than, let's say, 0 0.5, you start to see these effects. That can be fixed. It is difficult to fix in XL, super easy to fix in 1.5, but it can, fix in, can be fixed. There are many ways, more advanced options and other videos. So let me show you that. Now I go 0 0.5, less denoise, but likely will be a better image. And see here that also you see some scenes between the tiles. So sometimes those scenes are visible. So again, there are some options to control that. You will see all those options. Now you have it in the ultimate aux scaler that it tends to, to be better. So this aux scaling, look at that, took about one minute. Okay. So much slower, four tiles, 20, uh, 20 steps each one. Probably this one, you increase the steps to 50, and maybe you will see some improvement, but it still will be split in four images. So, <clears throat> so nothing to do there unless you get you no know, additional additional control. But already you can see here that you don't have those tiles, those that is stuff there. And let's see our final result. Same will happen if you here where uh, if you stay in latent space same will happen okay you're going to have double faces double heads and so on so look at that now reducing the uh the fantasy now the, the noise if seems fixed the face is a little bit strange and just to 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 point something that you start to see how the tiles are merged and so on and let me zoom in here that i already see here see here that Kind of here, you start to see how things are. And look at the mouse also. You see that different images are being uh, overlapped, and then these things are merged, kind of a linear interpolation. But from far, things OK if you spot the details. And sometimes you will see that large denoise. You start to see eyes somewhere hidden here, here. It's very likely that you are going to get all the noise here, because here's where you, the things are are very different. You have more details here also. Okay. So that can be control this option. Okay. So you increase, but it doesn't have a too heavy effect. So if you reduce also, if you reduce now the, the, the noise to 0 0.3 will be perfect. Low the noise, it will be very close to this one. But now to show you as the ultimate, that is much better. So let me stay with this one, same stuff, use this. And then you have more options here. So here's different to this one. Now here you set the tile width, width here. So you put it here, your number, whatever. So now remember the larger, the better, but stay within, within the limits of the model. You put this one to see, it will take the same dimension. And then these are the options. This is a little bit of the magic. So this is, it will blur the image a little bit to add more detail. So pr probably you have no uh, seams in your image, this will fix. Probably you start to have you know, those strange artifacts, you know, like faces, eyes, and so on. Increase this, okay? So it will add sort of noise, and it will try to fix it. So I like to put it here by default. I like to put it to 32 for me. And this is the padding, how the, the image overlap. So this is also, they have a strong effect. It's not like in the previous one that the effect is not very strong. Here it's very strong. So 
if the tile width is the same dimension of the image or larger than the image, I recommend to put it to zero. Then is it, you have many tiles in the image. You need to play with this one. Personally speaking, I like to put it in 128, okay? Or 10% of your final image. So it's about the one that will be here, but this have an influence and can go up to 512. So this is how the tiles overlap. I like to put it here. And this have to see now with this detail here and so on, how overlap and many details. So be careful, play around with that, with that value. So now let me click generate and it's the same stuff. So here that you have, uh, uh, okay, first I didn't, I didn't, I didn't change the aux scale. So see that my final Canva will be the same, but I will end this image generation just to see. So I stay in at the same di dimension of the image. So it is of of scaling, but I'm not increasing. But look at that, it works, okay? Same image dimension, and you don't see any strange artifact. And actually, this will be a nice comparison here, because pretty much we have the same image, I think. Gosh. Let me put it here. So yeah, very similar images. And look at that here, you have this detail here. So that was pretty much controlled by that auction detailing. Also the canvas size, can, the tile size can have an influence, but you see there. But now let me go here, very important. So here I took the dimensions from the image. You can give your own values or you can scale. So what a given factor. So let me scale 1.5. And again, to say that Already, as you put this dimension 2048, you need to, to add some old extra control because you might start to, to see eyes and so on. But with the SD aux scale, it tends to work better. But I will scale 1.5 to keep you know, within the good, good, uh, good values or good gen image generations. Okay, so now I go here and Let's wait. So let's see here that you can see already. This is your image size. I multiply by this factor 1.5. Sorry, it should have been two. So I forgot that I was working with this value, but look at that. Now you have four tiles, two by two, and it's going to render each tile. So let's wait for this image. By the way, everything, the memory management is fantastic here in Forge. So as I mentioned, I have been able to, to do 16x of scaling with 8 of video RAM. And it managed the memory perfectly. It is very time consuming, okay? No need to say that. So if you are lucky enough and you have a, a A100 uh, GPU car, yeah, that, that will be super fast. But let's say mortal people, mortal users, they don't have those video card. Okay, there you go. We have the image. And while we talk about, so look at that statement. Okay, with this the noise value, actually you can go very large in the image. It's more than 0 0.5. You will see that you will start to have those details. So be careful, play with that. Let me go, no, actually not. Let me go and Custom size, let's use this one. Okay, so now much larger, this is okay. So look at it again here, it should be two by two tiles, but as I have overlap, it will be a three by three grid. Okay, and 0 0.5, I will leave it like this. If I go 0 0.6, I'm quite sure that maybe I will have artifacts. You can play, you now you can download this image and play around to see that. So let me click generate. I already have the image here, previous one, and there you go. So this was original resolution, new resolution, and clearly you can see that new details. So just here in the nose strip. Then the noise, the, the noise has an influence here, so see that different details, so it's up to you if you're happy with that or control that, or you can do in painting here, or using control net, you can force these to, to, 
to be to have a different shape or so on and it's up to you so but the details are fantastic now look at here like actually the starting image here and clearly so we're completely missing this stuff you know, that is part of the fantasy of the model but for the rest we went from this paint to something very photorealistic and we also increase the dimensions or if you want to stay very let's say close to this one reduces the noise and there you go so this is our creative ox scale so now okay so the previous one was 123 and the new one okay 130 so i double i already see so it wasn't that time consuming so let's well, I already know it's a big one, so here, 2048. So let's compare this. So usually when you go above 24, uh, 2048 or, or above, it will also save the JPEG, but in the JPEG, <coughs> lost some, some details. Okay. So in this one, we have also the, uh, the I increase the, the fantasy now, 0 0.5. So look at what happens. Okay, so this one now is starting now from the image is adding these details. I want to remind you also that I, I, I fixed the, the seat number. So if I take this one, change the seat number, likely we'll get different details. Okay, so it's not like always you're going to get the same. So changing the fixed number, you can see the influence. All the very nice necklace there. Yeah, no complaint. This is perfect. The face, the eyes, and then let me zoom there. So clearly, this is much better resolution. And then you can do the same. So now that you have this image, you can drop it in image to image, or you can do this step. You have it there. Probably, if you want to stay very close to, to this one, reduce this value. You can put it to 0 0.3, which is OK, or leave it at 0 0.5. Or if you want to add more fantasy, 0 0.7. 0 0.7 here is where things are difficult to control so be careful about that but it's up to you and you can stay in the ultimate sd ox scale or you can move and actually let's do the last step just to to end here and let me take this image have it there and let's do an ox scaling of this one of no four is too much two or four actually four no two i mean i don't want to just to illustrate so basically take this image by the way remember that you have this tool here and all the images that you generate uh it was here you have the metadata embedded so and then you can move that metadata and so on so you have it there so let me go here back and you have the image so bam 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 should be here and um, extra here so not so in, not so nice i don't like this result but probably what will happen hmm <laughs> okay let's work with the ultra char ah okay it's it still it is it is upscaling it's, okay it's not done so look at that now it's 2048 and it's doing the uh, the upscaling but it's time consuming okay this one was a little bit more time consuming okay so yeah now sorry and this one just to confirm okay and this is what we have so the original one so as I mentioned many times, I'm happy with this one. If I have enough details, uh, for me this is more than enough. So I already can see now it's much smoother now the edges and so on. Probably it messed a little bit with the colors. The eyes seems to be much nicer, so let's see 
yeah sharper and so on and there you go so yeah this is a nice result probably yeah contrast of the colors but you can pass this and uh, you can control that using python so on as the image manipulation libraries or you have gain whatever so it's not big of a deal and finally also to show you that sometimes if you don't know what is happening with this image and actually let me put the starting image and this so you have this click button and this will interrogate the image it's very helpful or you can use the interrogator you know you have a different one so depending of the image also the first time that you use this uh, it will download the model there is a model now to to clip that information from the image so sometimes also in those cloud-based tool they don't ask for the prompt they don't ask for the prompt because they directly interrogate the image also they ask the users to launch options like is this photorealistic is this whatever so using those options as i mentioned this is a gain of numbers they play with those options to get the, the best one to get give you the best result but look at it this is a fantastic prom a painting of a woman in a blue dress with mountains in the background and clouds and whatever so probably this is an artist style highly detailed old painting so look at that if you want to convert this to a uh, realistic okay and almost done uh this is not good because this will have an external influence to make it a pain again okay so Probably you can erase this, you can erase this photorealistic painting and leave also photorealistic figurative art also, you don't need it. Also, you can put photo there and so on, but prompts are important. And to show you finally that you have also this interrogator and you can also use that one and it tends to be, so you have many models by the way there you choose and this model tends to be also very good. Lions, these, these, these are the guys that the training models uh, that they have billions of images with keepers and so on so they're the ones that create so it tends to be very good but i'm happy most of the time with this one so click generate so you have different options best fast classic but whatever and ah oh, cool can uh, i have it here but i never look at the negative Option there that it can give you a negative function. So this one also can be a little bit time consuming and be careful as I mentioned that uh, it will download models and these models are, are 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 heavy by the way. Much heavier than the checkpoint. So I'm lucky that I have enough space to, to put it there. So let me wait for this and let's see. Okay, I'm back. So that that took more than I was expecting. Okay, so took a while, but let's see the the prompt. Actually, well, the the, the one in the image to image is faster, but I guess you have to change there the the auction. So pretty much very similar. Okay, the outer long braid. Okay, long blonde braid hair girl on the Alps, extremely pale blonde hair realistic 3d style so this will be very heavy into this 3d style this painting so well very accurate very nice okay so there you go you have different options so to summarize remember this workflow well okay the, the, the easiest one will be this one so it's up to you to pick up a way so i show you in extras tab you have this option so you can go for this model of scaling ai of scaling i call it fidelity and remember that <coughs> you can download many of those models here you have a lot of stuff then you can go for image to image which is the creative of scaling and that depends in the model and many of the other auctions and lotus and so on so there is a lot of stuff there so it's up to you so like in this case, I, I added a couple, I added a lot of, well, I rested there, but I have many. So it's up to you that will change and drive and give you better results. And then you can, you can link everything one and then the other. Okay. You can do it in the opposite way, by the way, but the best results are like this to get something more complex. Okay. So, but the main conclusion models, the checkpoints is very important. No? All the inference models, let's call it like that. So. You have many of them, pick out the best one. So yeah, that's all for this tutorial. See you next time. Bye.